In this example, we're going to be controlling a DC motor using an Arduino connected to a serial wombat via I squared C. The serial wombat will be powered by the Arduino's power supply. The motor will be powered by a benchtop power supply. You could also use a battery. Control for the motor is going to go through an N channel FET. In this case, we're using a signal FET. This is not normally the one that the sort that we would use. We'd probably want something with a lower RDS, but for this particular example, because we're going to be showing some short circuits, it actually works well. This particular FET is an old one, more than 25 years old. It has an RDS of four and a half ohms when you drive the gate with five volts. Uh, it's designed to take a maximum of 320 milliamps, and it has a power dis dissipation of 700 milliwatts, uh, which is important. We'll have to keep that in mind later in our project. So this circuit's really pretty simple. We have a flyback diode across the motor. We have the gate of the uh, transistor. I used a symbol here that was a, a voltage regulator from the Fritzing library, but this is a transistor. Its gate is tied to ground via a 1K resistor. And we have a line that's going to the serial wombat pin three that will be driving the motor. The current, the power supply over here has its current supply set to more than one amp and is set to roughly five volts. The code, that we, the Arduino sketch is simple. We're going to declare a serial wombat. We're going to initialize our I squared C and initialize the serial wombat with the proper I squared C address. We're going to set the serial wombat pin number three to an output. We're going to initialize the serial on the Arduino so that we can use its terminal command. And that's it for initialization. In our main loop, we're going to alternate by incrementing I and checking its last bit between turning the motor on by setting the pin high, which will set the gate on the N channel FET high, or setting it low, which will set the gate on the N channel FET low, stopping the current. This works pretty well. Let's do an upload and take a look to see what happens. Here we can see that the motor is alternatively turning for three seconds and stopping for three seconds. Right off the bat, everything looks great. However, suppose that this was an externally connected motor that you had leads that were going out somewhere. And for some reason, that those leads got shorted. We can see that the motor stops. What we can't see is that the amount of current that's flowing through the path through the transistor has gone up dramatically. Let's take a look with a thermal camera and see what happens. We can see that as we induce the short, we get a rapid temperature rise from 80 to about 230 degrees within a second or two. Uh, this is because there's massive current going through the end channel FET. If we take a look, this is a picture of our current controlled power supply. We see that when there's a short, it jumps up to about 800 milliamps and then drops back down over time as the uh, transistor heats up and its resistance increases. A quick calculation shows us that 600 milliamps at 5 volts is 3,000 milliwatts. We saw from the data sheet that the part can only stand to dissipate about 700 milliwatts. So we're going to get continued rise of temperature on the part and the part will eventually fail. By altering the circuit with a feedback, we can monitor for if there's a short circuit across the motor and have the wombat react automatically. It's important to note that the feature that we're showing here is only intended to help prevent damage to your hobbyist circuit. The serial wombat isn't designed to protect human beings or property from any kind of damage that could happen as a result of a malfunction of the serial wombat itself or of the circuit or software that's used along with it. We can see that we've added a resistor from drain into an RC circuit that then feeds into pin two of the serial wombat. We will configure this pin two as an analog input and look at that value when the transistor is turned on. When the transistor is not turned on, it will act like an open circuit and we will get five volts 
on this resistor leading in here. When the transistor is turned on, it will look very close to a short to ground, actually in this case about 4 ohms, and we will get a value on this RC circuit that is very close to ground. Here's our sketch using the protected output. We declare a wombat. We declare a serial wombat protected output on that wombat. We declare a serial wombat analog input on that wombat. We're going to set up serial so that we can see text on the terminal. We'll do our I squared C initialization using the I squared C address for the wombat chip that we have. We'll call begin on the protected output that we declared. We're going to say 3 and 1, which means that we'll be controlling pin number 3, and we'll be getting feedback from pin number 1. We will begin on our feedback channel, our analog input, which is on pin number 1. Our loop is similar to the prior loop, except that we've changed a couple of things. Uh, skip this for now. If i is odd, then we will turn on the output, but this time we're configuring it as a protected output. And what we're going to see is if fault feedback, that it is a fault if the feedback we get is greater than the expected value. That's the way we're configuring this. We're saying the expected value is 8,000 counts. I got that empirically by looking at uh, values the first time I ran this program before we saw it. We're going to say that we can have a mismatch time of 10 milliseconds before we trigger the fault. Under normal circumstances, we're going to drive the pin high. If a fault happens and we need a, we need a safe state, that safe state is to go low. Note that I'm using serial wombat high and serial wombat low, not the Arduino high and low, because the values are different if you want to declare one of these as an input. For instance, instead of saying go low, we could say make it an input. And in all those cases for this parameter, it needs to be serial wombat, high, low, or input. Otherwise, if it's not on, we're going to turn it off. You can also tell the serial wombat protected output to just act like a digital write. And what that means is just go low, go high, and for the time being, until I tell you differently, then ignore the output. I'm sorry, ignore the feedback. We'll put in a delay of 100 after whichever transition, 100 milliseconds. Then we'll go ahead and read the feedback just to send it to the terminal. We'll look at it in counts, which for the serial wombat analogs are 0 to 65535, or, uh, and we'll also look at it as millivolts as referenced against the Serial Wombat's internal reference generator. Then we'll delay for three seconds, go up to the top of the loop and do it again. At the top of the loop, we'll check to see if our diagnostic was tripped and that the, uh, the protected output went into a safe state because of a fault condition. If that happened, then we will print out the line that says protected output fault detected output set to safe state. So let's upload that sketch now. And we'll take a look at the terminal and see what happens. And we can say, oh, okay, this first one, don't worry about that, that we called is in safe state before we called configure. We turned it on and we saw the counts at the drain were 832. We turned it off and we saw the counts at the drain were 35072. Those are the values that you, you can hand in as your expected value. So I picked a value in between those two. I picked 8000 as our shutoff fault value. We can take a look on a logic analyzer and see what's going on there. Up at the top here, we have uh, I squared C traffic where we're sending commands to the Wombat. In this case, we took the protected output said go high, which made the gate on the FET energized, which then made the FET conduct to ground, which essentially pulled the uh, the drain. I'm sorry, the yes, the drain very close to ground. You can see that it goes down here to about 1.1 volts. After three seconds, we tell it, oh, we're going to go. Uh, we're going to set the gate 
on the transistor low, at which point the transistor becomes high impedance, and we end up with the path through here where we're going to be charging this inductor, I'm sorry, charging this capacitor through a resistor from the inductor. Those of you who've had network electrical networks classes know that that turns into an RLC circuit and uh, that there's some, some math around there that accounts for the ringing that we see on the way up. Uh, but it works well, works well enough for us. And we take a sample and we saw that it was on our input that we were getting uh, 2.24 millivolts 100, milli 100 milliseconds after the transition, which is about what the oscilloscope is showing us. And we get up here higher. Let's take a look and see what happens when we fault the circuit. We can see that the analog signal is not dropping nearly as far as it did before. This is being recognized by the Wombat, which then cuts off the power to the FET after only 10 milliseconds. As soon as we remove the short, because of the way that we wrote our Arduino sketch, the uh, motor begins running again. If you have questions, or if you've successfully used the protected output feature of the Serial Wombat in a project, please leave me a comment in the area below. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Questions sent to John at Broadwell Consulting about the Serial Wombat will not be returned.